Hello appraisers, this is Brandon with Choice Valuation, and in this video I'm not going to be covering anything related to Spark or Trendsheet. Basically this video is because I've had quite a few appraisers recently contacting me about some things they saw online regarding using one big screen TV as your monitor instead of having multiple monitors. I highly recommend it. I'll get into a little bit of why, but re the real purpose of this video is to show those of you who are using it or are considering using it, uh, what you can do as far as virtual monitors. As, so you basically can set up your big screen TV to be multiple monitors uh, without the hassle of multiple monitors um, and how you can kind of customize that and create the monitor setup however you want to within your big screen TV. So what you're looking at right now is my big screen 55 inch TV. Now you gotta be careful about the TV you buy. In the, at the end of the video, I'll get into that. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to explain uh, essentially the benefits of going to a big screen TV, at least a few that I can think of off the top of my head. And then I'll get into how you can set up your big screen to act like multiple monitors. So this big screen 55 inch is essentially the equivalent in viewable area of four 24 inch monitors and that is actually what i used to have before so you know i went from single monitor to two monitors to three and then i got four and then i had tried five for a little bit and that was too much so i went back down to four and i was really happy with four but it was just a hassle with all the cables the power cords so essentially i had four power cords for four monitors four cables going into the computer you had to make sure you have a computer that has four ports for the monitors and if not you got to buy adapters or buy a docking station it's just kind of a hassle so I switched over to, I went and got this 55 inch TV and you don't need a really nice TV. There are a couple things you need to look for, but you don't need a super nice or super expensive one. And uh, essentially I use this now and it, I just set up the virtual monitors. So I turn this one big screen into multiple virtual monitors. And so right now what you're looking at is I essentially have um, one, two, three, four, five, six monitors set up, virtual monitors on this one screen. And so you can see like, here's my appraisal report. I've got it dead center right in front of me. And this is, by the way, this is my configuration when I'm doing appraisals. If I'm working on, uh, if I'm doing something else that's not appraisal related, uh, I'm working on Spark or something else, I have a totally different configuration and I'll show you how you can quickly swap between configurations. But essentially I've got my appraisal report here I can scroll through and look at everything, and I've got my MLS here, I've got other internet stuff, whatever you might that want that to be. The reason I'm showing this is because this is the software I'm using to create the virtual monitors on my computer. Um, it, you, Windows, the newer versions of Windows, you can do it. It's just not as seamless and easy to swap between configurations and to set it all up and have it be permanent. Um, so I highly recommend if you're gonna do this, you, that you use DisplayFusion or you find some other software similar to it. DisplayFusion is the only really good one I know of. There's a free version and a paid version. I believe the paid version is either 25 or $30. It's well worth the, the money, but I actually think that what I'm about to show you in here is included in the free version. I, I could be wrong about that. It's been a long time since I bought it, but I'm, I think that might all be included in the free version. So anyways, I've got my monitors here. I, like I said, I've got my MLS, whatever other internet stuff I wanna have up here, I've got that. I've got a PDF documentation down here my calculator, of course, and then I have just file explorer. So I can go through and look for whatever files I might need, quickly open them up, and if it's a PDF, it'll just open up down here, or I can you know, drag and drop files around. So that's the way I have it set up um, for doing appraisal work. And so what I'm gonna show you now is how you can set this up yourself. So when you install DisplayFusion, you can either go down here in the bottom left, type in DisplayFusion, and it will come up and you can open it. Uh, but the easier way is just, it's right down here in your taskbar, so just find it. This is it right here, that's the icon for DisplayFusion. You right click, and it's Monitor Configuration. So you just go to Monitor Configuration. And now, let me just bring this to the center of the screen. So now you can see this is my big screen TV. Now you may or may not have this. This is just because I'm on a I'm running everything on a laptop, so it's my laptop screen. I don't really ever use that while I'm sitting at my desk, except in some rare cases. So this is my main monitor though, or my big screen. And what you do is you click on splits and padding. And so 
Now you can see these are the monitors as I have them set up. So I've got the two over here, the appraisal form filler one here, and then the three over here. And I just set this up because that's how I like it. And I'm, what I'm going to do is show you how to do it yourself. So, because I'm sure, I'm guessing you're not all going to want to do it just like how I have it. So, um, what you do is take advantage of the preset splits. You can save yourself a lot of time and hassle by starting with this. So find one that's basically like what you're looking for. Um, a lot of people go for this one right off the bat, the two by two. So let me just show you what that looks like. So I clicked it. It says, are you sure? And so that's this. And so this is essentially on my 55 inch, this is the equivalent of four 24 inch monitors and so if I click OK and then apply it's going to basically turn this into four identical virtual monitors and they will all be the equivalent of basically a 24 inch monitor if I were to have a multiple monitor setup but it does create actual virtual monitors so that's the way it looks to Windows and you can see over here like if I um, minimize this and then I go and maximize it. It maximizes just to that virtual monitor, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, it, you can also choose if you want to, when you're done, to say that you want task bars on each of the individual monitors. So if I click that, it'll put a task bar at the bottom of every single virtual monitor. I don't particularly like that. In the beginning I used it, but I decided I didn't like it, so I don't use that. Um, but let's go back to it. So I click splits and padding. And now let's just, um, let me show you kind of how I did mine. So I went to this for my appraisal work. So I clicked this one because I wanted one big long one. And so it gave me this. And then basically, now I customized it a bunch, but this is essentially what I did was I did something like this. I click um, vertical split, and then I click this one and click vertical split. So I've got two monitors, my big one, and then two monitors. Now this one, I further split up by doing this so now i got the big one two fairly size fair, fairly good size ones on the left and then these two smaller ones and the one big one down here so essentially um, although i did customize it a bit by shrinking this down but this is essentially the way i set it up so it's pretty quick and easy um, now if i wanted to customize this i could so let's say i wanted to make this why uh let's, let's say i wanted to make this smaller so First, always make sure you check autofill all splits. If you don't do that, it's gonna look ugly and you're gonna have empty space that's doing nothing. So click autofill all splits. And now if I wanna shrink the width of this one right here, I do this. And you can see what's happening is it's automatically making this and this larger. And now if I, I'm like, okay, I'm happy with this, but I wanted to keep these about the same, then all I do is I click this and I shrink the width of that. And then it will kind of make those, and I can get them until they're right about the same size, something like that. Uh, so anyways, that's the kind of the way you do it if you want to really get in and customize it. Now, so I've got that set up. You hit OK, you hit Apply, and you're good to go. It'll, it'll keep it like that. You want to make sure and save, your, save that, though. So save it when you're happy with it. You got it all set up just how you like it. You save it as a profile and you name it. And so this one right here, I have saved and you can see it, it's called appraisal. So when I'm going in and doing appraisal work, this is the method I use right here. But if you save multiple profiles, so that would be my one profile, then I can come down here and if I'm, you know what, I'm done with appraisal work now, um, tomorrow I'm gonna spend all day working on Spark, then I can come in here, right click and go to monitor profiles and I can switch to the Spark one. So if I'm working on Spark, I click that. And it says, do you want to keep the changes? Yes. Now you'll you'll see that nothing changed because it's not going to automatically drag all your monitors around. Although I will say that it's possible to do that with Display Fusion, customize it so that it will um, automatically fill everything into the right spot. Um, it's a it's a pain to do though, so I don't do that. Basically, what I do is I just get rid of the window I don't need. And so let's do this. I've got this, I'm gonna expand, whoops, let me do that. So this is how I normally do it. And you can see as I drag these around, it tells me what monitor I'm on. And you can see my Spark setup is a little funky. Um, so let's just show you what that's gonna look like here. Normally I have, like I'll put a calculator here and I have, that's how I like that. I got this here. So that's normally how I have it. And then let's see, 
I have, yeah, so I'll do something like this, MLS up here. I'll have my all my internet stuff here. Let me get that how I wanted it. So yeah, like that. And then this is my coding so the software that I use for coding in Spark. And so this is how I normally have it set up. Of course, I wouldn't really probably have my, I might have an MLS open here, if I, depending on what I'm working on in Spark, or I might just use this for some other, uh, whatever other software I want to have open at the time. So I've got some file explorer over here because I'm moving files around a lot. This is just how um, I, I load files onto our Spark servers. And, and then I've got my internet calculator, or sometimes I use this for my texting behind here is my texting stuff. Um, and then whatever else miscellaneous thing I wanna have here. So that's how I have it set up. And so that's automatically set up. And if I, you know, if I maximize the screen, it goes right up to the virtual monitor that I set up. And so I'll just quickly show you what that looks like. Sorry, I know this video is getting a little bit long. Um, so if I go here, right click, and I go to monitor configuration, then, I can see now, um, let me hit splits and padding. So you can see this is how I have this one set up. This is how I like it. I know it's funky, but essentially I've got five virtual monitors on top and two regular, the, in this case, the equivalent of two 24 inch monitors on bottom. And that's just how I like to work in Spark. And, but you set it up however you want to, and you just save these profiles and you can quickly and easily switch between them. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, I, I told you I was gonna get into some other stuff, and that is, if you're interested in doing this, then, um, oh, and by the way, I noticed here, uh, let me just show you that, because it is important. You wanna set this up so it, it works well and it's easy on the eyes. Um, I noticed when I switched over to the Spark profile, it went down to 30 hertz. You want to make sure and have this set to 60 and save it that way. I probably screwed up and I didn't save my profile at 60. So let me apply that change and keep changes and then save it as, yeah. Okay, so you make sure you have that set at 60. 30 just means you may have some noticeable flickering and it might be harder on your eyes. So make sure you set that to 60 hertz. Okay, so now what I'll get into, if you're interested, you can obviously stop watching if you're not, but if you are interested in this and you haven't purchased the big screen TV yet, just a couple recommendations, uh, just so it's easy on the eyes. And because a lot of uh, appraisers that I talk to or that you'll see feedback from online is, they're very hesitant about doing this because they're like, man, if I have this giant big screen TV right in front of my face on my desk, it's going to be hard on the eyes. But if you buy the right TV, it's not uh, because of the resolution will be just as good as a monitor. So it would be no different than having multiple monitors right in front of your face on your desk. Uh, so it's not hard on the eyes. Um, you do want to have a, a decent depth of desk, like maybe I would say 24 to 30 inches deep. Uh, my partner who is in the, my business partner who's in the office uh, on my left, he he sits on my left over there and his desk is 24 or 25 inches deep and there's no strain on his eyes at all and I use his sometimes and it looks great. Mine is a little deeper at 29 inches, um, but I think as long as you're like in that 24 inch to 30 inch range on the depth of your desk, there shouldn't be any issues. If you have a desk that's only 18 inches deep, that might be an issue um, as far as the TV being too close to your face, but not because of strain on your eyes, but mostly because you know, you're gonna be having to look far to the left and far to the right to actually see everything. Whereas I can just kind of stand back or sit back. By the way, I'm on a sit stand desk. So I can just stand here and see all of my monitor at once without having to worry about like constantly moving my head back and forth. Okay, so the monitor you wanna get, and actually I had a website here. This is a really helpful site. It's rtings.com. This is a good page right here I recommend checking out. I just did a search for, uh, here, what did I search for? I searched for rtings PC monitor. And I clicked on this one, the six best 4K TVs for PC monitors. So really helpful site. The, there's like two main things you want to be careful about when you buy a TV that you're going to use or a big screen TV that you're going to use as a monitor. So you don't have strain on your eyes. And so it's really crisp and clear text, uh, which is mostly what as appraisers we're going to be looking at. So it's this right here, 4K monitor. You definitely, definitely, definitely want a 4K monitor. Don't get a regular uh, 1080p 
TV. That's not going to cut it for this um, unless you get a really small TV. But uh, as far as, you know, 50 inches, I think 50 inches is, might be the smaller range that you want to go to. I mean, it's all up to you, but I think 50 to 55 is a good size. Um, again, 55 inch would be the equivalent of four 24 inch monitors. The nice thing though, is there's no bezels. So you don't have to worry about big black space gaps um, where from one monitor to the other, cause it's just all seamless right here. So 4K TV, and then also this, which it sounds foreign the first time you see it, Chroma 444. So essentially that's a method of displaying the information on the screen where it's going, it's gonna make the text look crisp and clear to you um, and not be a strain on your eyes. So you gotta make sure that your TV that you're buying supports this at 4K. And this website, for example, if you go through here and do search for monitors, it will tell you all about that TV and whether it supports Chroma 444 at 4K. Now there are TVs that support Chroma 444, but not at 4K. So they'll do 4K and they'll do Chroma 444, but not at the same time. They don't go together. So you got to make sure you do, you have a TV that's 4K and it does Chroma 444 at 4K. So when you're buying the TV, just make sure it, it has that. Uh, now, my TV, I don't even know the exact model. It's a Samsung, I think it's U8500 or something like that. I did get a curved screen TV because I thought it would be helpful to have this curved screen in front of me and easier to see the stuff on the edges, but it's actually not. Um, so it doesn't matter, I, I don't think, at least in my opinion, whether you get a curved screen or not. Um, my partner uh, who's also my brother he sits over here on my left and he has a perfectly flat screen and it's fine it's no different to look at it's not easier or harder they're the same in my opinion so so yeah i um i think there's no difference there just whatever your personal preference is so i think that's it that's all i wanted to say make sure you get a 4k make sure it's chroma 444 at 4k and I think you'll be golden and you'll be happy with it. As far as size, I think 50 to 55 is probably pretty decent. Um, getting bigger than 55, you're probably gonna have a whole lot of swiveling your head back and forth, uh, depending on how far away the TV is from you. Um, but again, don't worry about strain on your eyes because if you get those two things, 4K and Chroma 444, then you won't have that issue. Uh, all right, thanks everybody for watching. Hopefully it was helpful and uh, that's it.